If you've ever used direct deposit for your paycheck or signed up for recurring payments where the merchant deducts the funds from your checking account, say for a mortgage payment or a monthly HOA fee or other regular payment, then you've experienced making ACH payment. It's just one of the digital ways to move money from your bank account to the bank account of the person you want to pay. Many businesses, including your company, are looking at this payment method now with real interest. How can you you take how can your company take advantage of ACH payments make sure you stick around until the end when we show you how to deal with the elephant if you will in the ACH room ACH payments are electronic funds transfers between banks making ACH payment processing an easy and convenient way to send and receive money using only a bank account number and a routing number as you may know, there are two main kinds of ACH transaction. An ACH debit transaction, which pulls or withdraws funds from your account. For example, where your bank takes your monthly mortgage payment from your bank account. Alternatively, and the type of transaction most of us are probably familiar with, an ACH credit pushes or sends funds from one account to the recipient's account. The most common example of direct is direct deposit of payroll, where your employer takes money from its account and pushes it to your account. Today, many companies pay their suppliers in this manner. Businesses save time and efforts using ACH payments because they eliminate the need to deal with expensive and inefficient paper checks. What do we mean by ACH? ACH refers to the Automated Clearinghouse, a U.S. payment processing network that is managed by the National Automated Clearinghouse Association, also known as NACHA. The Federal Reserve System introduced ACH payments in partnership with the banking industry over 50 years ago. The roots of ACH and NACHA go back to 1968 when a group of California bankers became concerned about the growing volume of paper checks. The Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco began operating the first ACH in 1972. These electronic payments were designed to be more efficient than cash and paper checks. That's an understatement to put it mildly. NACHA oversees the network of ACHs. This payment system enables seamless direct payments, such as bill payments. The ACH network handle also handles direct deposit functions. The U.S. government and its agencies are huge proponents of ACH. For a long time, direct deposit of payroll and social security payments were the two most common payments made using ACH. As much as you probably don't want to think about this, and I know I don't want to think about it, think about your own tax preparation, your, your personal tax return. The IRS now gives you the option of paying them if you owe them money through the ACH. Or if you're lucky enough to get a refund, they will put the funds in your account also using ACH. And to entice you to accept payment this way, they will pay you quicker if you accept the electronic payment. The success of direct deposit led some organizations fed up with paper checks to look for a way to pay their suppliers in the same manner. They were already paying their employees this way, so why not their suppliers? Hence the development of the term direct payments. ACH direct payments. Any individual business, not-for-profit or government entity can send money via ACH direct payment. Businesses save time using ACH payments because they eliminate the need to deal with inefficient paper paper checks or mailed payments. How does the ACH go through the banking system? Banks gather ACH transaction into batches and process them two or three times a day. Batching check transactions lets the bank reduce operational costs and they pass the savings on to businesses as lower transaction fee. What are the requirements for ACH transactions? When making ACH payments, you will need to collect the following information from your payees and then of course you're going to relay it to the bank. For each payment, you will need to know the account holder's name, the dollar amount to be transferred, the payee's bank's routing number, sometimes referred to as transit and routing number, and the payee's account number, their bank account. It is assumed by your bank that you have permission to make these payments and they will not verify that. Likewise, and this is important, if you give one of your suppliers the right to pull the money, i.e. do an ACH debit from your account, 
the bank assumes they have permission. Nobody checks. This is where some of the early ACH frauds were first perpetrated and why it's we recommend that you do daily bank rec. But I'm off topic. Let me get back. How does ACH payment processing work? Well, in our hypothetical example, we'll assume you have an invoice to pay and that you've already set up this particular supplier for ACH payments, so you've collected their banking information as we described it earlier. You send the information to your bank, the bank where you have your bank account, the account that you want them to debit for the funds that you're going to send to your uh, payees, probably your suppliers. In the finance and banking community, you will see your bank the entity that's going to initiate the transaction, assuming it's an ACH credit, referred to as the Originating Depository Financial Institution, or the OGFI. Note, if an ACH debit is going to be used, your supplier will be doing all the work. They'll be setting up the transaction, sending the money to their, the information to their bank. You just have to make sure that when they do it, you have sufficient funds in your account to make the payment. The bank takes your supplier's information as you provided it and includes this transaction data in the day's scheduled ACHB batch payment. The batch payment clears the supplier's bank before being routed to the company's receiving depository financial institution, referred to as RDFI. Yes, the banking and finance community refers to the institution that receives receives your funds as the RDFI. Your supplier's bank then credits the supplier's account for the amount that you authorize. Before we get into a discussion of the elephant, if you will, in the ACH room, if you're getting value from this talk, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would give us a thumbs up and hit the like button. It really helps us. Okay, the elephant in the room. Now you might have noticed that nowhere in this discussion did we mention remittance advice. That is that slip of paper usually attached to the paper check that often contains details about the check. For example, if the check is to pay several invoices, they may be listed on that in remittance advice. Also, some smart accounts payable groups use that space to, to list any deductions they may have taken. You do not have this available for ACH. For some time, this held up back the adoption of ACH for B2B payments, but no more. Savvy companies email that information to their suppliers so their suppliers have the information they need to do cash application. It's that simple, and it saves you the time and aggravation of dealing with paper checks, not to mention the expense. But you're probably thinking that that sounds an awful lot like an e-check, and to a certain extent, you would be right. Let me briefly explain the difference. Wires, ACH, and e-check are all forms of electronic funds transferred, often referred to as EFT. So if somebody says they'll pay you with an EFT, you need more precise information. It's not a precise term, but rather a generic term to, to describe a group of services. And an e-check is a digital version of a pa traditional paper check. With an e-check, money is electronically withdrawn from the payer pay payer's checking account, and transferred over the ACH network, and deposited into the payee's checking account. An ACH sounds and operates similar to a wire, wire transfer also, but there are very distinct reasons and use cases for using an ACH or a wire. They're very different. We recently did a short talk on that issue, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.